All right, Algebra 2, here we go. Home stretch on Chapter 4. We're in 4 6 right now, completing the square. Okay? The essential question here is why is a perfect tri square trinomial used for? Well, let's make sure we define it first so we know what we're talking about. A perfect square trinomial is one that's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where our c term is half of our b term squared. Okay, for example, if I had x squared plus 4x plus 4, notice here our c term. Half of 4 squared is 4, and that's our c term. So when you get that, then you're talking about a perfect trinomial square or a perfect square trinomial. Okay? Uh, and, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here as we go. But that's basically what we're talking about. Okay? So let's look at uh, solving some more uh, quadratics. Okay? This time when there's no bx term here. Okay, this should be bx. Looks like I got messed up here. No bx term. There's no middle term. Okay, and you can see here, solve for x. We got 4x squared plus 10 equals 46. When you see a problem like this and there's no x, okay, there's no bx term here, just the x squared, then solve it like we solved way back with the linears. Isolate the x squared. Get rid of addition and subtraction first. Get rid of multiplication and division, and then once you've isolated the x squared, square root both sides. Okay, and you'll notice here when you do this at this point, your answer is plus or minus three, because if x was three, three squared is nine, and if x was negative three, negative three squared is nine. That's why it's plus or minus nine, right? Or plus or minus three right there, because you get nine either way. Okay, so if there's no middle term, isolate the x squared, solve that thing. All right. Solving a perfect square trinomial. Now, notice here, two things. This is a perfect trinomial here because half of the b term squared gives you your c term. And we're also equal to something. Uh, to keep things in line with the way we've been solving problems, I'm going to tell you to do what we've been doing. Set it equal to zero. Okay? Subtract the 25 over. Remember, you can only combine like terms. So you're going to take the 4 minus the 25. That's where the minus 21 comes from. And then factor it. Split up your x's, you get a uh, plus minus, so you're going to get a plus minus. Factors of 21 that differ by 4, 7 minus 3 is 4, so you're going to get the plus 7 and the minus 3. Set them both equal to 0, just like we did in the last section. And x is negative 7, or x is 3. Okay, So that keeps it in line with what we've been doing. The book shows you a couple, little bit, something a little different. Let's just keep things the same. Okay. Now, let's get to the, the main thing here. What if you can't factor the trinomial? You get the trinomial into this form, and there are no factors that give you 4. Okay? What do you got to do? You got to complete the square. Okay? The thing about completing the square, and what we're trying to do is, we, we've got something we can't factor. We've got a trinomial we can't factor. What we're going to do is we're going to create a perfect square trinomial over here, because that perfect square trinomial can be written in, as a square binomial. You can take x plus b over 2, that b over 2, quantity squared, and they're equal, okay? And then we can square root, and I'll show you how to do that, but that's a key point right there, okay? This is the main thing about completing the square. So, what do you do? So you get something like 3x squared minus 12x plus 6 equals 0, okay? You could think about playing around with this thing to get it to work, but there's nothing that you're going to be able to just easily factor it into, okay? So what do you do? Well, first thing we want to do when we're completing the square is add or subtract a constant to the other side. If you've got a constant term on this left-hand side, add or subtract it over to the other side. Okay, so in our case, we're going to subtract the 6. Then check. If a is not 1, divide it out. If that's a 1, you're good. And I'll show you that in an example after this. But if it's anything other than 1, divide it out all the way across. As long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equals, it's still balanced. It's still okay. You just change the way it looks. So we have x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. That's what you get when you divide the 3 in there. Okay? Let's turn this over and take a look at it. So here we are. What you want to do next is you want to... I like to do this. I like to put a plus blank, plus blank on each side. And in those blanks, we're going to add b over 2 squared to each side. So I'm taking this right here and I'm making it a perfect trinomial square, perfect square, okay? 
And, and you do that by taking half of b and squaring it. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. So again, it looks a little different, but we kept it balanced. Okay, we did the same thing to both sides. We added 4. Okay, so there's my half of b squared. Bam. Now, we, we do this so we can do this. Okay, this right here, that's our b plus, or x plus b over 2 squared. And since b over 2 is negative 2, that's why it's minus. And you get plus a negative 2, it's just minus 2. Okay. And negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Once you get this, now you can uh, square both sides, square root both sides, because that's a square. To get rid of it, you square root. So we just get what's inside, x minus 2. You get plus or minus the square root of 2, same reason we talked about earlier. And then just isolate the x. Add the 2 over, you get 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. That means x equals 2 plus square root of 2, x equals 2 minus square root of 2. Okay, so let's take a look at that in another problem. So we got a problem here. There are no factors of 7 that add up to 12. Complete the square. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kick my constant to the other side. I've got a 1 here, so I don't have to do anything there. And I'm just going to build in my blanks right there. Okay, what's going to go there? Half of that negative 12 over 2 squared, that's negative 6 squared, that's equal to 36, so we're going to put a 36 here and a 36 here, okay? Half of b squared, and half of negative 12 is negative 6 squared is 36. Now that is a perfect square trinomial, so I can write it like that. So I'm going to get x and it's half of this was negative 6 on e squared, if you took x minus 6 times x minus 6 and foiled it, that's what you would get. Negative 7 plus 36 is 29. Square root both sides. I'm just following my steps here. I get x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 29. Add the 6 to the other side. There's my answer. Okay? That's completing the square when you can't factor your, um, your trinomial, okay? You can't factor the C and get that B term. So you kick it to the other, kick the constant to the other side, you manufacture a perfect trinomial square, put it as a perfect binomial square, square root, and then solve for X, okay? We're going to look at that tomorrow in class, uh, spend a day or two on that, completing the square. Uh, it's real important later on with some of the other things that you'll do, uh, but we'll get after that tomorrow in class. All right, we'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye.